Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. It is baseball season, and with that, I'm gonna show you how to create your own SVG file. I am not a Cardinals fan. However, my nephew is a huge Cardinals fan, and I am actually gonna be making him a custom jersey. And the very first thing I need to do is create my own layered SVG file so I can put it on top of his jersey. So today, what I'm gonna show you how to do is take the St. Louis, St. Louis Cardinals logo and create a layered SVG file in Inkscape. Inkscape is a free design program. It is amazing because it's free. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing you're gonna do is open up your internet browser of your choice. I'm using Safari and all you need to put in the Google search field is Cardinals logo SVG. When you first load in, this is what it's going to look like. You're gonna go over here into images and conveniently, the very first one that I wanna use is this one right here. This will be linked in the description of the video, so you technically don't even have to look for it. You can just go in the description of this video and it'll be linked for you. So the next thing that you're gonna do is coming over here, we are gonna right click this and we're gonna open image in new tab. I already have one pulled up right here. Okay, the very next thing you're gonna do is you're going to open up a blank window in Inkscape. I already have one right here. Okay, then what we wanna do is take a screenshot of this entire image. We So on the Max, it's Command, Shift, and 4. This little uh, target will pop up and you just wanna create a box around the entire image. It doesn't matter if it's like overly big on the, on the screenshot, you just wanna make sure you're including all the essentials for this project. So like, let's say if your box is like this and you only have three fourths of the left side of that, you're not gonna have a really good layered SVG file. So we wanna make sure the box is all the way around the entire image. Then when you have that, just let go Go back over into Inkscape and with your screenshot, we are just gonna drag the screenshot into Inkscape. Don't worry about anything that's right here. Honestly, I have never touched this. In all the years that I've using Design Space, I have never touched any of these buttons. And then just press, okay. All right, this big, huge thing is gonna load up and be large and in charge. Okay, in order to resize this, what you wanna make sure is that you want this lock button that's right here to be locked. Don't have it in the unlocked portion. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna resize this down just so it fits better into our uh, canvas area. And then I'm just gonna drag it over just a little. Okay, let's zoom on in. Okay, so we still have some tweaks that we have to do. This may look like a layered SVG file to you, but it is definitely not. We have a lot of work that we have to get to it. So with the image clicked, we are gonna right click and we are gonna trace bitmap. Okay, when you first load into the trace bitmap window, it's going to pop up and it's going to look something like this, which definitely isn't what we want. We want something that kind of looks like this. We're actually looking for outlines. Now I'm going to say this, there are multiple ways that you can trace your own bitmaps. I'm gonna show you the way that I would do it, which frankly I think is the easiest. Um, but again, there's multiple ways and I've shown the multiple ways in previous videos. Okay, so when it loads in like this, Again, we've lost a lot of features. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna go down and we're gonna keep, we're gonna press down on our um, numbers and then we're gonna press update. Every so often, we're gonna just press a couple numbers down and then press update. What we're looking for is all the rest of the features. So right now we're missing the red portion of the bird and like the inside portion of the Cardinal's name. So that's what we're looking for. So we're just gonna keep pressing down and pressing down and pressing update. Okay, eventually you will get to something that looks like this, which is exactly what we were looking for. We are looking for just the basic outline of our screenshot picture. When you have that done, then press okay. It will look like nothing happened, but as long as you press the okay button, I promise it did. Then what you wanna do is just come over here and we're gonna exit out of that box. What you're going to do now is you're just going to drag over the top portion of your bird. Ours, because it is a now an outline, will look something like this. Now we are gonna keep this for reference, but in order to tell which one, because sometimes when you do traces, you're kind of confused on like which one is actually yours. If we drag over this 
screenshot version if you drag it over this black line this like vertical black line right here that's our project board and if you drag the screenshot over you see how you can't see the project board behind the screenshot that's telling us that that's our screenshot if we go over here to our traced and we come over here do you see this vertical line that's our project board on the right side and you can see it through that s that's our traced file Okay, so again, we are gonna keep this screenshot image just for reference, and we're gonna keep this one just like that. We're gonna Command D, which is duplicate. It will look like nothing happened. We are gonna drag over the very top portion right here. I always like to keep our, the trace file untouched until the very end, just because if I mess up anywhere in the process, instead of going all the way back to the very first step of tracing our screenshot, I can just go and start using this one. Okay, so in our duplicate file, let's do Command Shift K, which is if you come up here into these options right here, it is gonna be path and then break apart. That's the one that I just did. Okay, so now you need to think of this as a puzzle. We have had all of our pieces and now we just broke it apart and now we have like all these pieces that are just strewed about, right? So what we need to do is we need to put the puzzle back together. The thing with Inkscape is, is when you do the break apart, what happens is, is the largest piece of that puzzle gets put to the front. So it is going to be the all black. We're just gonna click that. I'm gonna change this over into a navy because the colors of the Cardinal logo is a navy. And then I'm gonna send it to the back. Now the eye of the Cardinals is also going to be uh, dark blue so let's zoom in and I'm going to click that eye I'm also going to turn it to dark blue and I'm going to send it to the back okay and then referencing back over to our original okay we have the beak pressing shift on our keyboard and then we're going to click the baseball that's the baseball bat that's yellow so it's going to be this piece this piece this small piece and then this one over here and we're gonna change that over into yellow. Okay, and then we need that eye is going to be white. So we're gonna click that and change it white. And then all these pieces of the bird are going to be red. So let's click that. And we're just gonna change one over to the red. Let's zoom in. And we're gonna change these small pieces and this one over to red as well. Okay, and then, oh, we got a couple little stragglers right here. Okay, so when we did that, if we're referencing back over into our original screenshot, you see how this piece right here that's white and this piece right here that's white, technically it's not white, it's actually cut through. And when we broke apart everything, including the cut through things got taken away as well, which is this black piece and this black piece. So pressing shift on your keyboard, click both of those black pieces and we're gonna command shift and the plus sign, which is welding. If you come over here into the function boxes up here, it would be path and then union. Okay, when you have them combined together or welded together, having both of those selected, we're gonna press shift on our keyboard and we are gonna click the dark blue background that we created. And we're gonna go command shift and the minus key. Or going back up in here into the functions, we're gonna go path, and then difference and that is slicing through so now we have our little cutouts here okay let's go and click on these letters right here they're still black but we need them to be red love that and then we still need oh we got an eye we got to make that dark red okay so we're missing the insides of the letters right and if we click it, what happens is, is like you can't really click inside of the letters. And it's because just like the very first thing, the largest pieces always get sent to the front and the smallest pieces get hidden in the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that red cart, the ordinals, and we're going to send it to the back. And you see how now we have found the two black pieces. Okay, so now let's take this dark blue again. We're going to click that and we're also going to send that to the back. And now what's revealed is, is the insides of the letters that we need. So because this got broken apart, just like the same thing of these legs of the cutouts, what we need to do is, is we're gonna click on one, shift on our keyboard, and then we're gonna click all the little black pieces. And then we're gonna command shift and the plus sign, which is welding or combining. And then 
with them still clicked, we are going to press shift on our keyboard, click on the, uh, the Ardenals red, and we're going to command shift and the minus key, which is slice. So now we have a little bit of slicing going on. See how now you can see that there's more little black pieces have been revealed. And now we can see a little bit of the blue in between the letters. That's perfect. Okay, and the reason why we have these new black pieces is, is we have to now cut out the insides of where the blue is. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna select the Ardenals red. We're gonna send that to the back. Now we're gonna click on one black one, shift on our keyboard, and we're gonna click all the black little pieces, command shift plus sign, and then we're gonna press shift on our keyboard again, clicking that dark blue, and we're gonna command shift minus key. Look at that, now we can see the white project board. Okay, the red portion is still hidden, so we are gonna send the blue portion all the way to the back, and look at that. Okay, referencing back over to our original, do you see that it looks like apples to apples? Exactly what you wanted here is exactly what you wanted here. So when I was selecting my colors, do you see how my reds don't match up? So I'm just gonna go back in, and I'm gonna click on my reds, so I'm gonna click on one, shift on my keyboard, and I'm gonna click on all the red that I have, and I'm gonna make sure that these are all the same color now. We wanna make sure that we don't have a whole bunch of canvases when we go to the Crickets later to cut this out. Okay, so now we can delete everything else. We can delete del the original screenshot. We also can delete the traced file. If you wanted to keep this and use that as an outline, you totally could, but I don't need it. Okay, the very last thing, which is definitely optional, you don't have to do this step. I just like to do it because I'm gonna use it for the crickets and it just gets a lot less confusing later. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna click on all of the red pieces. Okay, and let's just drag it out of our screen, out, out of our S layered SVG file. And I'm gonna command shift and the plus sign. I am welding this together. So it is making sure that everything is going to be stuck in its place later when I go to use this in Cricut. And the same thing with the yellow, I'm gonna click that beak. I'm gonna shift on my keyboard and I'm gonna click everything that is yellow. And I'm gonna command shift plus sign, which is welding. And then this thing right here, oh, here's my eyeball. I'm gonna leave it there. So this thing right here, has one little piece. So I'm gonna click the blue, shift on the keyboard, and then that one little dot of the eye, and I'm gonna command shift and plus sign. Okay, so now when we zoom out, we have one, two, three, and then that white little eye. That's it, that is our layered SVG file. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up into file and save as. I'm gonna save it as Cardinal logo, and then at here, at the very bottom right here, I always like to change my files over to plain SVG and then press save. Okay, so just to show you that it does load up appropriately in our design space, just open up a blank window in design space and we're gonna press upload and upload image. Instead of dragging and dropping the file, I'm just gonna browse for my file. When you found the file, just click on it and press open. I don't need to rename this because it's already named for me my save file and you can see the little pieces right there and just press upload. When it's finished uploading, you just wanna click on it. You'll know that you clicked on it because a little preview window will pop up right here and then you're gonna press add to canvas. And there it is. I'm gonna make this really big. Oh my goodness, that is our layered SVG file and I'm gonna be able to cut this on my crickets. All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to make. And if you also wanna learn how to make your own personalized jersey, watch the next video where I finish up this jersey and I send this off to my nephew for his birthday. I will see you later.